On June 14, 1957, Matthew J. Roach was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the son of a military worker. He graduated from El Dorado High School in Northeast Albuquerque in 1975. He received a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Stanford University in 1980 and later earned a Master of Fine Arts in Film Production from the University of Southern California in 1986. He first worked as a cameraman on the music video for the music video for Easy Ease, Easier Said Than Done. He made his directorial debut with the 1990 comedy film Zoo Radio. He gained recognition for the Austin Powers trilogy. Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, released in 1997. Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, released in 1999. And finally, Austin Powers and Goldmember, released in 2002. He directed all three movies. Suzanne Todd produced all three movies. He also directed the sports comedy drama film Mystery Alaska, released in 1999. He continued to direct critically and commercially successful films, such as Meet the Parents, released in 2000, and his sequel, Meet the Foppers, released in 2004. He also directed Dinner for Schmucks, released in 2010, and The Campaign, released in 2012. As I said in the previous video, I bought the Will Ferrell Korea Film Collection at a CVS in the Movies You Buy bin in the middle of the pandemic for $6.99. So it does qualify. My name is Marty Huggins. I'm running for Congress. Huh? Does this mean we got a campaign? Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it real good. That little guy's a weirdo. I'm gonna smoke that clown. We're gonna be under a lot of media scrutiny. Anybody have anything that they want to share with us? I went to the petting zoo and I, I let the goat lick my wee. <laughs> One time I put a firefly in my butthole. Why? To make my farts glow. Okay. My opponent, Marty Huggins, works out at Curves. Where did you get that photo? Make sure the cameras have film in them. I feel like Britney Spears at the VMA. Oh, shove a throwing star up a Chinese monk. <gasps> We've got some babies to kiss. Stop it. That's my baby to kiss. He just punched a baby. The campaign. Is anyone asking how my hand feels after punching that iron-like jaw of that baby? Democrat Congressman Cam Brady, played by Will Ferrell, has run unopposed uh, for the 14th District in North Carolina. We don't know how long he has run unopposed, but he's currently running for his fifth term. A scandal erupts when his affair with a supporter is revealed when he calls the wrong number. With eight weeks to go before the election, businessmen Glenn and Wade Motch, uh, played by John Lithgow and Dan Aykroyd, Sense that Cam Brady is vulnerable, and persuade Martin Huggins, played by Zach, Zach Galifianakis, who is a tour guide, to run as Brady's opposition as a Republican nominee. Brady invites Huggins to a civility brunch, where Brady has a brief presentation where he brings up several unflattering facts that make Huggins seem like a loser. Reduced to tears, he meets Tim Watley, played by Dylan McDermott, who is his campaign manager also paid for by the Motch brothers. His goal is to transform Huggins into a successful politician and a family man. During his first debate with Brady, he accuses Brady of dodging questions and presses the viewers with his resolve to bring jobs back to North Carolina. After the debate, Brady, intending to punch Huggins, punches the baby instead, doing further damage to his approval. Brady makes two TV ads, one, an ad which speaks approvingly of his extramarital affair, and an attack ad against Huggins, where he implies that Huggins is a terrorist for having facial hair, like Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. Uh, Brady has lunch with a Goldman Sachs lobbyist, pledging his loyalty in return for a big campaign donation. After Huggins points out in a debate that Brady has not been to church in a long time, Brady attends a snake healing church. Brady is bitten by a snake, resulting in his hospitalization, 
which causes his popularity to recover somewhat. In the meantime, Huggins goes to a temple where he mistakenly refers to a yarmulke as a Yamaha. Huggins' wife complains about the campaign, and Huggins has a normal night with his family, which Watley quickly interrupts. Uh, Brady's son tells him that he intends to use his methods against his opponent for class president, and he realizes he is setting a bad example. He travels to Huggins' house to make peace, but he ends up getting drunk. And when he leaves, Huggins, encouraged by Watley, reports him, and Brady is arrested for drunk driving. Um, with two weeks left to the election, Brady and Huggins debate again. Huggins produces a story written by Brady as a child called Rainbow Land and accuses Brady of being a communist. A melee ensues and Brady, attempting to punch Huggins, punches a dog instead. As a result, Huggins is five points ahead of Brady. Seeing that Brady will likely lose the election, Brady's wife leaves him, taking the children with her. Uh, she claims that she was offered a lobbying job with the Mosh Brothers. Huggins airs another TV campaign ad with Brady's son addressing him as Dad. Enraged, Brady seduces Huggins' wife, played by Sarah Baker, and publicizes in, in a campaign ad. Uh, as a result, Brady's campaign manager, Mitch Wilson, resigns. Uh, Huggins leaves his wife as a result of the ad, but gets revenge on Brady by shooting him during a hunting trip. He gets away with it, causing his popularity to further increase. Huggins meets with the Mosh brothers soon afterwards, but gets cold feet when he finds out about their plan to import Chinese workers into the proposed factories in the 14th district. The Chinese workers will be paid low wages, and the Mosh brothers' profits will further soar because of reduced shipping costs. Realizing he has been used, he rejects their support. The Mosh brothers quickly defect to Brady's side, with Watley becoming Brady's campaign manager, and they quickly revitalize Brady's campaign. Huggins is down by eight points, with one day left to election day. His wife, appearing contrite, apologizes to Huggins, and they reunite. On election day, Huggins runs a TV ad where he reveals the Mosh brothers' plans and promises to be completely honest. As a result, Huggins surges ahead in the polls. In the exit polls, that is. This is election day. Uh, but the election results are rigged by the Mosh brothers, and Brady wins the election. At his victory speech, Brady reveals the Mosh brothers' plans and announces his withdrawal from the campaign. Huggins wins by default and appoints Brady his chief of staff. Six months later, the Mosh brothers are called to appear before Congress after being exposed by Huggins and Brady. Huggins points out that everything they have done is legal under the Citizens United decision, but they are arrested because they have harbored a known fugitive. Tim Watley, that is. Uh, I should start by saying that the campaign is unique in that it's the first movie that I made in this uh, low budget reviews that I actively dislike, um, and I will explain this over the next few minutes. The campaign is essentially a political parody, and the question is, in the 11 years since the campaign was originally released, since this is now 2023 and the movie was released in August. 2012, uh, whether uh, it is still relevant or if real life has exceeded the parody. I would submit that, in spite of the extraordinary events in the last 11 years, in which the, the two major political parties in the United States have switched sides to where the Republicans were the party of warmongering and censorship and the Democrats were the, the party somewhat of peace and um, freedom of expression to where now uh, it seems the uh, the Democrats are the party of, uh, of warmongering and censorship and now the Republicans are uh, somewhat the party of peace and free expression. Um, in spite of that happening and Obama winning a second term, a former reality show becoming president, the Hawkening leading to the stewardship of, of Biden, 
um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, in which uh, basically like they had other other lockdowns, and they said that the only way that things were going back to normal was for everyone to have the vaccine, and the, the vaccines didn't really work, and the only way that things went back to normal was that uh, everyone just said, hey, let's just go back to normal. Uh, the January 6th riots, which, depending on your position on the political spectrum, was either an insurrection worth, worse than September 11th and Pearl Harbor, or an unguided tour. In spite of all this, it seems that those producing political parties may have something to say. Um, that having been said, I don't know if the campaign had anything relevant to say. Obviously, the writers didn't like the outcome of the Citizens United decision, and it would seem that with the Supreme Court be, be, becoming increasingly conservative, the hope for Citizens United being overturned in the foreseeable future is basically a pipe dream. Also, the writers uh, apparently didn't like the, or don't like the, the Koch brothers, um, and Mach is a thinly veiled attack on, on them. For a period of time, the Koch brothers were considered evil incarnate, and every time political proposed a free market solution to a problem, they were, were, would be accused of being on the Koch brothers' payroll. Keep in mind that in a free country, business, businessmen would be able to do everything that is anathema in this movie. In other words, they would be able to build a factory and staff it with workers making low wages if they could find such workers. Uh, is the fact that the United States is not free that causes wages to rise and causes corporations to consider alternatives such as outsourcing to other countries and automation. Uh, this movie starts with Cam Brady being portrayed as a lecher. He's essentially Anthony uh, Weiner on steroids. Uh, he is also, as we find out later, not a very good congressman, as he often misses votes and doesn't even read legislation. Also, his wife is only married to him because he's a successful congressman and, and you know, successful, in, um, depending on, on what you choose, congressman, he's successful in being elected. He's not much successful as a congressman as being, he's not really that successful in a congressman, but anyway, as soon as, as he's down by five points, she leaves him. Uh, part of the problem in this movie is the lack of a likable character and Cam Brady and his family are a case study in this. Um, his opponent, Martin Huggins, isn't much better. He works for the tourism board in a small town in North Carolina and is only in demand because the Mosh brothers want an empty suit they can use as a puppet. Even his father looks down on him. If there's a likable character in this movie, it would be Huggins' wife, Mitzi, uh, played by Sarah Baker, who married Huggins because she was in love with him Although, she is valuable too, having an affair with Cam Brady. Uh, so what we get are a bunch of unlikable characters in pursuit of a modicum of power, specifically a congressional seat. It's not much fun to watch. At one point, I was rooting for Huggins to win. Not that he deserved to win, but Brady deserved it even less. And his humiliation would do him some good. Um, if this were a comedy sketch, it would be funny. But stretched out into a movie, the jokes are spread too thin. Um, one of the mysteries of this movie is how such an awful movie racked up a budget of $95 million. And that was the budget for this movie. It grossed about uh, $104 or $105 million. So it didn't make that much money. Um, we all marveled in what Kevin Smith could do on a budget of less than $30,000, and the total budget for Beavis and Butthead to America was uh, $12 million, and most of that probably went to Bruce Willis and Kevin Moore. Uh, but somehow, $95 million was spent for this abortion of a movie. Uh, part of the reason this movie may have been expensive is because there are guest appearances from Chris Matthews and the late Ed Schultz, I guess to give the movie some realism to it, uh, and, you know, does it work? I, I guess so. It's basically, it could have, if they had, like, some anonymous news newscaster instead of Chris Matthews and Ed Schultz, it probably would have been 
equally uh, realistic. Um, Entertainment-wise, they, they don't really do anything for, for me. I, I guess uh, Chris, Chris Matthews kind of looks like a, a porn star, um, but other than that, they really don't don't provide much value to the movie. Uh, the movie is rated R for crude sexual content, um, language and brief nudity, although I, I don't seem to remember any nudity. Uh, crude sexual content pretty much sums up most of the movie, especially when the incumbent congressman has sex with the wife of his opponent. As for language, uh, there is foul language aplenty. I guess it's just there to make sure we don't take the children to see this bomb. Um, and so, if there's one good thing about this movie, is that it raises awareness of the Citizens United decision. Um, if you don't know what this is, search for it. As Martin Huggins would say, it's worth a Google. Uh, basically, Citizens United versus uh, FEC, FEC stands for Federal Election Commission, held that the provisions of the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act of 2002 restricting unions, corporations, and profitable organizations from independent political spending uh, and and prohibiting the broadcasting of political media uh, f funded by them within 60 days of general elections violate the First Amendment of the Constitution. Uh, it reversed the district court decision of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Um, and it's kind of interesting, the procedural case here, instead of like, a, it, uh, if it was brought up in a state, then it would go from the district court uh, to the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court, but here it was it, it originated in the District of Columbia, so it goes from the District Court to the Supreme Court, just a uh, procedural thing, um, but it's kind of interesting for that. Um, merely summarizing the results of this case don't do this justice, and if you haven't read the full text of the decision, it may behoove you to do so. And if not, at least read the Wikipedia article. The ruling in the case was hated by left-wing activists for years, and they expended some political capital towards overturning the Citizens United decision, which, with the increasing rightward shift in the Supreme Court, will likely not be overturned in the foreseeable future. Much was made in the fact that the majority opinion stated that corporations are artificial persons, and therefore have rights including First Amendment rights. Well, I have to admit that as a libertarian, um, corporations would not exist without the government, neither would they be subject to restrictions without the government. In any case, an informed population is probably a good thing. So, look it up and do a deep dive on Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. Uh, citation is uh, 558 U.S. Uh, 310, uh, there should be some uh, extended citation information appearing on the screen right now. Um, but other than this increasing awareness of this landmark decision, there really isn't much to care for here. As a sign of how bad the movie is, in the end, the Mach brothers are arrested for harboring a fugitive. I could imagine a prequel to this movie in which Watley, aka Leonidas Stavros, the, uh, aka the Greek Butcher, runs the Greek Mafia, has a reversal of fortune, is forced to live under an alias, and become a campaign manager where he sublimates his killer instinct into subverting Amer American politics, and I imagine this movie being a much more interesting movie than this dud. Like a drowning victim, it holds out this case to public attention, namely the Citizens United case, before it goes under drowning in a sea of retarded sexuality and crude language. For this reason, I give this movie a 2 out of 10. Okay, well, I, I wanted to put an addendum onto the, onto the movie review. So, um, when I was growing up, the, when the credits rolled, that was traditionally the end of the movie. This idea of uh, of uh, having 
a scene or two at when the credits roll is stupid and needs to stop. And the other thing is that this seems to, to enforce some stereotypes about uh, politicians. One of them is that that uh, Democratic politicians are sexual lechers. They can't keep in their pants, but they're generally uh, good politicians, although it seems to be contradicted in this, in this movie. And, and Republicans are sexually repressed. They're also like uh, pu puppets for, for uh, big business. Um, so it seems to enforce a stereotype there. Um, uh, the other thing that, that gets my goat is that like, uh, they, they seem to be reinforcing uh, traditional uh, political stereotypes. But then, at some point, they become good politicians. Um, they, they, for some reason, they seem God and, and they decide they're going to be honest politicians and then become good, which is completely unrealistic. my opinion anyway, but anyway, that's just my um, additional opinions on the movie, take it for what, for what it is. This part is pretty easy. There are two DVDs including the Will Ferrell 3 film collection, the semi-pro DVD and another DVD containing both the campaign and Get Hard. There are no special features on this DVD as most of the space is devoted to these two movies. So, no documentaries, no production notes, no director's commentary, uh, to be as succinct as possible, nothing. At least we could view the movie with either English or Spanish subtitles, so I guess that's something. After I was underwhelmed by Semi-Pro, I watched the campaign, hoping that this movie would be sufficiently funny and hopefully I'd get my money's worth, but I was not impressed. I therefore only slightly recommend this three film collection, but there's one movie remaining here, and I should view it soon, and I'm going to be optimistic about this, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, as of right now, I only slightly recommend this uh, three film collection. That's it for this DVD review. Um, so I think for next week, I'm probably going to do the uh, romantic comedy thing and and uh, do Frankie and Johnny for the DVD review um, or I might do the uh, Clint Eastwood uh, from the Blu-ray collection but um, anyway like the video and comment on it and hit the subscribe button to be informed of the latest low budget review and uh, oh yeah I think my homework is like just to, like read the Citizens United decision I guess um, but anyway uh as always, thank you for watching.